Hello folks and welcome back to Sewing Off Sarah. Welcome if you're new, my name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today we are back for my March plans vlog. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, as I'm running Sewing Girl Referendo, um, I already have quite a few plans this month. Uh, in fact, this month, um, I think I'm cursed. There is no such thing as a quiet March for me. Obviously I don't make it any quieter by running Sewing Girl Referendo, but it is perennially busy um, and it, it really is just every single year everything coalesces and becomes a March thing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my plans for the month, what I'm up to, where I'm going, um, what's on my plate and what's on my sewing table. So grab a cup of tea and let's catch up. So first and foremost, So Your Referendo. Now I have two makes for So Your Referendo. One is here, one is over there. So the plan is Make number one is this one, which obviously I've been wanting to make for ages. This is my Ilford. I'm going to swing the camera around a little bit so you can see it. But of course the iron is in the way. Of course it's not on. Um, it's just on the counter. So here's my Ilford looking very beautiful. It's basically done. All we need to do is stick the cuffs on because currently we are open, open to the world. And I need some buttons, but I'm really struggling to decide if I want buttons or if I want poppers. I have pliers and stuff to put poppers on, um, but I want to know your thoughts. I haven't ordered anything yet because I thought maybe like brass poppers would actually look quite cute because I just don't think buttons will look right. And also, I don't necessarily want to do buttons through what is one, two, so two layers of waffling, actually no, possibly three layers of waffling, one layer of cotton and some interfacing. I don't really want to have to do buttonholes through that. Whereas I can hammer a popper through that, I absolutely can. So let me know your thoughts, sorry that was just my hand, in the comments below. Tell me if you think buttons or poppers, then I'll get it ordered. And then that's my make for So Yellow yeah, Ferrando pretty much done. So that is the Friday Pattern Company Ilford, I'll link it below. Um, I have lined it, but please note the pattern is not lined. So the actual Oh, I've got it next to me. I'm not organised today at all, um, but because I've been sewing it, it's next to me. So this is Friday Pattern Company Elford, long view, short view. This is the one I'm making. Um, it is a really great pattern. I really like it, but just to be aware, it's not lined as normal. I think they've done an expansion pack for lining it or a blog post on lining it. I don't know. I made it up, I'll be honest. I just cut the back the front and the front again and the sleeves again out of my lining fabric. I started with the plackets, this is the first thing, so I made the plackets flat as you always do but with the lining fabric enclosed and then I sort of built the jacket around that so I did outsides, insides but they, it was already attached to the sleeves so I did one sleeve at a time sort of inside out and pulled it through so I'd do the inside, then I'd do the outside, then I'd like wiggle it through. It was a whole thing, but it has actually worked really well and I'm really happy with it. So yeah, all I need is my poppers, all my buttons. I need to put my cuffs on and also, ah, ah, no, no, that's a pattern piece. Um, sorry, I'm just knocking paper pattern pieces around. I also have these super cute hand warmer style pockets to go on, which are also lined and adorable. Um, notably, both of these fabrics count for Sayola Ferrando. So if you're less this and more this, you can still get involved, it is still fine. Um, also, first week of So Yellow Ferrando is done, unbelievably. We've had our first Instagram Live, which was brilliant. We've had some fabulous vloggers, so please go check those out. I've linked the playlist below because I'm live adding everyone's vlogs to the playlist so you can see them. And you can watch them all together as well, which is a nice thing to do, I think. Go and tell them how much you love their plans. And if you're so inspired, please join in. Uh, remember, if you want to join in for Say Yellow Ferrando, make something, post it on Saturday, 23rd of March on Instagram. Tag me and use the hashtag Sew Yellow Ferrando 24. If you don't use the 24 bit on the end, I won't see it because we have four years worth of makes and you have to put it in the right year. So please, Sew Yellow Ferrando 24 and make sure you're donating a pound or more, but a pound if that's what you can do, to the Just Giving page, again linked below. We are nearly at 200 quid actually in our first week, which is pretty good. As always, we have a target of a thousand. If we hit that, then we will have raised 5,000 pounds in four years, which is epic. So please do give generously if you can. Um, and remember to put your Instagram name on your donations so that I can match your beautiful makes to your wonderful donations. 
Now, the other make I'm making, that's a weird sentence. The other thing I'm making, which actually relates to the jumper I have on as well, is for the My Handmade Wardrobe catwalk at the Sewing for Pleasure show on Saturday. So less than a week to go, oh my goodness, <laughs> less than a week to go, I'm terrified. I have never done a catwalk before. I am, I think, possibly unreasonably scared. I'm terrified I'm gonna like fall over or something. Um, but I am doing the My Handmade Wardrobe catwalk. I'm so excited. I've also never been to the Sewing for Pleasure show and I've never even been to the NEC. So I'm really excited. If you're gonna be there on the Saturday, please come to the catwalk. It's like 11 in the morning, I think. So please come, wave, support us. I'm very, very nervous. Um, and also say hello if you're around. Um, it's gonna be really cool. I'm really excited, but terrified. Now, normally, sorry, I'm really breathless today, by the way, so if you hear me like breathing weirdly, sorry, I'm so like shaky and weird. But normally you would wear their samples. However, because it's so yellow for endo, I will be making, so one of my makes that I'll wear on the catwalk I've made previously. So they were like, can you wear this? And then they'll give me a sample top to wear with it. But I'm making my other one and it's yellow. So this is the skirt. So Vara needs a press because it's been folded and it needs an overlock. But this is the front of the skirt for the ready to party dress. So I've put it on screen. The ready to party dress is a stunning floaty dress and mine is the yellowest thing in the world. This is a visco Shelley from um, Minerva. It's so beautiful, I love it so much. And I'm so excited. It, this, is the fr this is just half and look, it has pockets. It's like a ball gown with pockets, I cannot even. So I'm gonna do the other half of the skirt today. I will need to interface this fabric to put the zip in but I don't have a zip yet so that's fine. I know I'm cutting it a bit fine, but honestly, I have not had time. So after this is done filming, I'm gonna quickly whack, um, whack the back of the skirt together. I'm gonna overlock everything, press everything, and then put the skirt together. And then I just need to do a princess seam bodice, which is lined as well. Hooray, I love a lined bodice, it's so much easier. So I'm gonna do that. And then it will be quite quick. Like it's not a difficult construction. Um, and I'm so excited to wear it. It's gonna be so fun. I'm thinking gold shoes to really sell the yellow. But I am doing this not only because I love my handmade wardrobe, but also to raise awareness for Sayer so Ferendo. It's the week before the party. So if you can't make the party, but you are going to the so, um, Sewing for Pleasure show, come and say hi. If you're thinking about whether you can make the party or not, I hope you can. It's, we've got, I think about 15 tickets left, if that. So please grab your ticket while you can. Once they're gone, they are gone. And if you want this event to happen in future years, you need to come along to help make this one a success because I'm very much dipping my toe in the water here of live sewing events. So please come along if you can, even if you come along for like an hour and say hello. You can buy some beautiful fabric from Sew Me Sunshine. You can meet other sewists. You can wear beautiful yellow things or partially yellow or even vaguely yellow. And you can help us raise money and raise awareness for a fabulous cause. Now, I mentioned it also had something to do with the jumper I'm wearing. So I'm really, really bad at wearing my makes when I film because I wear them the rest of the time. But when I film, I wear leggings and jumpers because I'm at home. Um, it, it frustrates me sometimes when people say, well, you never wear your me maids on camera. It's like, yes, but I wear them in the rest of my life. So it's fine. Um, but this is the My Handmade Wardrobe Funnel Neck Jumper. This is my second one. This is my cosy one. I have a structured smart one I wear to like work and stuff. And then I have a super cosy one. I love this jumper. The fabric is a super fluffy double knit, like a sort of cinnamon colour from Fabrics Galore, which I got gifted actually in September. Um, they gave us vouchers to spend there and that was really fun. So I love this jumper. Now, if you would like to make this jumper, you can enter the So Yellow Ferendo competition because a copy of this jumper is up, actually five copies of this jumper are up for a prize. So if you want to get it, dive on into the competition. But also if you watch the My Handmade Wardrobe Instagram tomorrow, you, so tomorrow being, I don't know the date anymore guys, Monday the 10th, Monday the 11th, no, no, no it must be the 11th because the following Monday the 18th, so don't ask why I've remembered it that way, um, on Monday the 11th, instead of a, um, a vlogger on the tour, we have My Handmade Wardrobe doing a live so long on Instagram for the final neck jumper. I was also a tester for this jumper, so I am biased, but I love it. 
um and i think it's it's a pretty popular one lots of you love it too um so let's sparkle made one recently that's stunning as well i uh, go check her channel out by the way if you don't i love her channel i've linked it below um but it's a great jumper massively recommend super cozy but also it's got little puffs and stuff in the sleeve it makes it a little bit more interesting it has a nice little slit at the side i really like the hem length because you can fold it like that and tuck it in or you can just leave it down and it hits your hip so i'm gonna stop bigging up a jumper i so clearly love but go check it out it's great and remember to go over to my handmade wardrobes instagram tomorrow and watch them make one live now other plans so okay so this month i'm doing so yellow ferrando obviously because it's my challenge it'd be weird if i didn't i'm also going to have a go at so frugal and i think i really want to enter it and actually i've got an idea i just need to look to see if i have fabric in my stash that would work for it but what i want to do is the tammy handmade anita camisole which is a free pattern and I like a camisole and I've actually just got rid of one that I've had for like an embarrassing amount of time but um it was like all frayed at the back and it wasn't fixable because it's that type of um like polyester crepe fabric that once it starts fraying like it has holes in it it's like impossible to repair so unfortunately after 15 years loyal service it has had to go to that clothing recycling graveyard in the sky so I thought I was due another camisole um and I'm having a look in my stash, actually. I didn't pull this out before, but I have this brilliant remnant. And I felt like that was very much in the spirit of So Frugal is to use a remnant. It's like a 30 centimetre wide, not wide, long. It's a long, narrow remnant, guys. That's what it is. So the fabric is beautiful. It's like black with tiny yellow and white flowers. And I figured I could probably get a cute little Anita camisole out of that and enter So Frugal. If you haven't heard of So Frugal, it's a brilliant, brilliant challenge. Uh, it's run by Frugalissima and the Yorkshire So Girl, so Ran and Sam. Um, it's a brilliant challenge and it invites you to use a free pattern, fabric that's already in your stash, and make something cool. And the reveal deadline, I believe, is the 30th or the 31st of March, but I'll confirm in the comments, not in the comments, in the caption, so that we're all working to the same thing. But this is my idea for So Frugal. Cute little camisole, using up a remnant in my stash before we move house. So we talked about challenges this month. Now let's talk about other things. So we are moving house <laughs> again. We're moving house again in April because once again, our flat is being sold. Now this time there is a really big difference. We, because of the rental market right now and because we're getting married this year and because one day it would be really nice to be able to buy a house, we are downsizing so we can save. And also because the price of a two bed flat where we live has doubled since we moved here three years ago, uh, which is kind of super frustrating. I'll be honest, it's really annoying. But making the best of a, of a frustrating situation and we have found a really nice one bed in town and it's a really big one bed. So we will have space. We'll be able to do the things we do. My sewing stuff will have to go back into the living room. So lots of you shared your small space sewing hacks with me, but please share more because I'm really I think I'm gonna have to have the biggest d stash in the world just so that we can move and I've got like a reasonable number like amount of fabric to actually travel and like have in a much smaller space I've got very used to having a sewing room guys but that isn't actually the problem small space sewing we can make it work the problem is I'm sewing my wedding dress this year <laughs> and it's kind of it's quite important that Adam doesn't know what that looks like. So I think I'm going to have to sew a cover for my dress form. My dress form will go in the living room because uh, I need the space. And Adam has agreed to that. It's totally fine because I've got wedding dress, wedding evening dress, four bridesmaids dresses, his shirt, four ties and another dress for our legal wedding to sew. So he has been fantastic and said whatever space you need is you know, it's fine. And I am delighted that the new place has laminate floors which I find a lot easier to sew on because like you can hear if pins drop and that kind of stuff like I just prefer it and also so much easier to get thread off the floor. So there are benefits but in the last month I have having a separate room to him and having generally more space I am working on my wedding dress twirls. So last night I cut out the paper patterns 
and I'm not going to tell you anything about the patterns I'm using but I did film the first segment of the vlog series my wedding dress so as soon as we actually get married in November I'm um, not telling you guys the date obviously but we're getting married in November because timeline wise it's useful to know after that there will be I think it's going to be like a six part vlog series on me making my wedding dress because there's so much to talk about and I don't want the vlogs to be like hours and hours and hours long each so I break it down hopefully into more digestible sections I have decided though, this isn't a secret, to make my life easier, I have decided to bin the big four pattern I was going to use for the bridesmaids in a figurative sense. I haven't bought it, but like that idea has gone in the bin. I'm not just binning patterns, guys. And instead I'm gonna use a pattern I already know how to make, which is the Ali Olsen Highland Wrap Dress. And what I'm gonna do is just slice the sleeve and make it a butterfly sleeve, because that's something all the bridesmaids really liked in the other pattern. And then otherwise, it's a nice wrap dress that will fit them. It's a really gorgeous pattern, it is size inclusive, it's really easy to make. I'm going to be making it in stretch velvet, now it is, it is a woven pattern so I'm going to have to be careful. But my plan is currently just to size down for everyone. Obviously we'll fit them and see where they go but like if they're in between sizes go with the lower one so that the stretch works within the pattern and also just think about direction and stretch and all that kind of stuff and make sure just just make sure it all like I think there's going to be some interfacing some stiffening in places to make sure like the meted corners still work and that kind of thing but I think it's doable and it has the benefit of the fact I already own the pattern so I can pay for the pdf to be printed four times that I don't mind doing but I don't have to trace a full length dress pattern four times I think I would actually lose my mind um and we do not have space to do that in the new flat so just I'm trying to pick ideas that are easier I'm conscious it's a very busy year and there is a lot to do do I need the stress of trying to fit a big four pattern to four very different people no no I don't no I really don't need this in my life so we're gonna go with a pattern I know a pattern I understand a pattern I know is size inclusive as well so if I need to grade and stuff it's not suddenly like you know, oh, I have to do this bit here and this bit there. Like I know as a pattern, it works on a really wide range of bodies. Um, so I think that's just, I think it's just a better idea. So I've ordered a load of fabric swatches from Minerva because they've got the best range of velvets at the moment. And I'll show you guys those actually, if you're interested, if you'd like a vlog on my bridesmaids dresses, I'm more than happy to share that pre-wedding because they're bridesmaids dresses, like it's fine. Um, so if you would like to see a vlog on that later in the year, let me know in the comments below. So wedding sewing is happening. I'm looking at my wedding pattern pieces, it's really cool. Um, but other sewing is happening too. Now, this is wedding adjacent. Wedding, I've got to hide that actually, because I have a secret pattern that's been sent to me by a pattern brand to try, and I'm so excited, but I can't tell you what it is yet. So as soon as I can, I will, but just ignore, ignore this whole section of my desk. I honestly thought that was a different pattern. Um, so this bag, Okay, so it is my future sister-in-law's wedding in May, which is very exciting. It's really cool we're getting married in the same year, actually. It's going to be really nice. So Adam's sister's wedding is in May. It's in Essex. It's sort of garden party, spring, beautiful. Oh, so pretty. And she's going with a sort of pastel-y colour scheme. Stunning. Love it. Beautiful on her. She looks like an actual princess in her dress. I'm so excited for their wedding. And when I asked what sorts of things I could wear, it was like, you know, sort of wear whatever you like because they're a lovely, flexible couple. But you know, our color scheme is sort of pastel-y. And I went, okay, fine, I'll give it a go. And then I sat and I thought to myself, I, like, I don't wear pastels, I don't, I look awful. But also it's a sort of garden party vibe. I can't wear like really deep jewel colors, like that's not really in, in that's, yeah, it's not really the vibe, is it? So, I've gone with spring colours. I've showed her the fabric, by the way. She's totally fine with it and loves it. Um, but I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, Suzanne, I've tried, and this is as pastel as I can. So this fabulous fabric, before I show it to you, is from So Much More. And I messaged Jess from So Much More, and I was like, I, I think I have to have it. Like, it's, it could not be more beautiful. Um, it's a cotton sateen, I think definitely feels like it and she literally she was like I told her what I was gonna do and then she was like oh my god I'm living vicariously through you so 
here it is and I cannot even explain how excited I am about this. So if I hold it up, it's actually hard to look at on the camera. It's not like that in person. It's just incredibly deep colours. So the back of it is sort of pale ash. The back of it gives you a better sense of what the pattern is on the front. Because on the front, it's the high contrast orange and pink, which I think actually works with my darker hair as well. I'm going to see if I can get my hair a little bit darker before the wedding. We'll see how we go. So with a fabric like this, what do you do? What, what, how do you make this not ridiculous? And the solution is, to me anyway, an incredibly simple pattern. So this fabric is going to become a Friday Pattern Company saltwater slip. It's gonna be a long one, sort of midi length. I'll put a little slit in the side so I can move. Tiny belt, very, understated pattern because it is a loud fabric however in the sunshine with like nude shoes and a nude bag very simple hair it's bright enough that it's summery and it's not a really dark jewel color which realistically is 90 percent of my wardrobe it's also not so light that it matches what the bridesmaids are wearing because that was my other concern the pastels I do are the ones that the bridesmaid and groomsmen are wearing. So I was like, all right, I need to steer clear of that. No one can accuse you of trying to look like a bridesmaid in this fabric, which I love. And I'm so legitimately so excited to sew this. I'm at, oh, oh, oh sorry, I just caught my elbow on the chair. Um, I'm so excited, guys. This fabric is stunning. Um, so I think I got two meters. I need to, it's been folded up in a bag, so I really need to give it an iron, but I want to try and cut it out today because the salt water is such an easy pattern to sew. If I can get it cut out, then I can just do bits and pieces of it, like as I'm doing other stuff, and I really want to take my time and make this beautiful. But, oh, that's perfect. Look at that. That angle has really got the fabric light properly. So I am so excited about this fabric. It is so beautiful. Um, I'll link it below. I think she's still got some left. So if you're thinking about it and you're like, oh, it's too much for me. No, it's not. It's great. Do something with it. It's so fun. Um, and this dress, the other thing is, I don't want to make a, a wedding guest dress I would never wear again. This will be worn on every holiday I go on ever. I love this. I love this fabric so much. Um, and it gives me a sort of bright, fun garden party vibe dress, which is something I do need in my wardrobe. Like I can imagine wearing this with heels to their wedding, but I could also imagine wearing it with sandals in like Greece. Now there's one more plan. I know what you're thinking. How are you going to make five things plus a wedding dress 12 this month? I don't know, but I'd really like to give this one a go because I can see it being a bit of a wardrobe staple this year. So as you guys remember, I did some remnant shopping at Sony Sunshine a while back and I have this one. So it's 1.73 meters and one and a half meters wide or 142, but you know, close enough. And it's really nice, ditzy, floral, white, tiny white and pink flowers on a black background, viscose. Lovely, simple, really like it, think it's really pretty. My plan is to make the Nina Lee Carmel jumpsuit. I have a mad silver cliche one, which is fantastic for nights out and um, holidays and wherever you want to look like you're in ABBA. Love it. It's great. Um, but I fancied a day one, something I could fling on with a jumper to go teach because it has pockets and full trousers. It's also appropriate for the summer. It's not too low. It's not too strappy. Like I could easily wear it to work. Um, and I just kind of wanted some smart pajamas. So Nina Lee Caramel Jumpsuit is on its way. I've made the pattern before. Last time I gave it an elasticated waist. I might do the same again this time. But I'm going to make it how it's meant to be made first. And then if I, if I feel like it needs it, I'll stick some elastic in the waist. But I'm really excited. Nice, simple pattern. And I, I just really want it. I want it to wear to work. I want it in my wardrobe. And I've been thinking about it for about a month, which is normally a sign that I'm not going to change my mind. And I do. No, it is a sign that it is a rational choice to add something to my wardrobe. You may have noticed, actually, I am sewing a bit less. I know it doesn't seem like I am, but I am sewing less. Um, I'm trying to be very conscious about what is in my wardrobe already, what I want, what I need, what I'm comfortable in. Like this has been on my mind for about a year. 
I've been thinking, what do I do with this beautiful yellow waffling? And actually the Ilford's a great idea because I can wear it in all seasons. It'll look cute with shorts and a skirt, look cute with jeans. It's a nice statement piece. It will have pockets. Look, it's, it's a useful garment and it's a nice way to make use of this beautiful bright fabric. Similarly, this is perfect. Oh, I've got my conference landing underneath. Um, this is perfect for a comfy jumpsuit. Um, and again, it's this kind of fabric I could wear easily in the winter with a jumper or with a cardigan or like laird or with boots or with sandals. Like I, I want those garments that I can wear for anything. So I'm really excited for that. And that is, of all the projects this month, this is probably the one that is for me and for me only. And I really want to get done so that I have space to sew. Like I love sewing for my challenge. I love sewing for like any Instagram challenge. It's really fun. And I love going to sewing events and I love organising all this stuff. But I need to make sure I also have sewing that is just for me. And that's very much where this sits. So I need to buy a zip, but otherwise I have everything I need. I'm going to get it cut out, I think, mm, probably Wednesday night, I will aim to. Oh no, because I'm on Instagram Live. I might cut it out before the Instagram Live. But anyway, I'm going to get it cut out this week and I'm just going to do like a seam every week or whatever. It will probably be what I then put a lot of time into after Say Yellow Ferrando, because I quite like it for when we got to Orkney in April. But yeah, a little, a little plan for me at the end. Now it is a busy month. Uh, if you also add to So Yellow Friendo and the Sewing for Pleasure um, show the fact that I also have a major PhD deadline coming up. So after this, I would love to sit and cut out fabric and I will try. But what I actually have to do now is edit this and then go and write like 3000 words. <laughs> That's kind of where I need to be. Um, on Tuesday this week, I need to send my supervisors a draft of a full chapter. Um, because we then need to decide what I'm submitting for the big sort of, it's, it, think of it like a performance review. It's an assessment, but it's not like a brief. You have to submit seven to 15,000 words, plus your updated proposal, plus some other stuff. So it's like a, it is more like a performance review, but you have to pass it to progress to next year. So there's a, there's a lot on at the moment, plus moving house. Um, plus organising a wedding. So we are busy, but they're all lovely things. I'm trying to take it a step at a time and just see see where we end up. So I hope you have a brilliant Sunday. I hope you have another wonderful week of So Yellow Ferrando. Please, please grab your tickets if you can. I've seen another couple get sold while I've been filming this. So go, go, go. Uh, I'd love to meet you. I'd love to see you come to Sew Me Sunshine. And Sew Me Sunshine won't be at the Stitch Festival, by the way. So if you want to buy fabric from them, come to the party. <laughs> But I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and a great week. And I will see you next weekend. I'm going to do a vlog on the Sunday. Um, well, I will vlog the Sewing for Pleasure show. So I'll do a vlog for you on Sunday saying what it was like going, what the catwalk was like, all that kind of stuff. Until then, thank you so much. We'll see you next time.